everyone welcome back to another video of Antwell plays today we are going to we are going to be playing in the story from choices of hero now when I checked out this book before I I was impressed by it I looked online about it and it was kind of it's kind of cool it's kind of cool if you ask me like there are some traits that they put in this in this story, and I think this is the perfect superhero story, I guess. Well, anyway, I want to start chapter one. Pixelberry just announced, announced like a couple of months ago that they were going to do book two of Hero, so might as well finish this. We'll start the book now and then finish it before book two gets around. Anyway... Without further ado, let's dive in. Hero, Volume 1. Oh, I forgot to mention that I can be my own character in this. Okay. Hero, Volume 1. I'm a guy. Mm -hmm. Hmm. Obvious choice. Default name's Alex. What's my name? It's Anthony. <laughs> I look cool. <laughs> oh my goodness. Chapter 1. The first day of the rest of your life. You soar over the ruins of Northbridge and touch down amidst the wreckage of shattered skyscrapers. Where are you? Come and face me. A figure rises out of the smoke and fire, rather than chaotic energy. I'm not hiding. You're the one who's hiding. You've been hiding all your life. What do you mean, hiding from what? From yourself. From what you truly are. You haven't even begun to comprehend the power within you. Maybe so, but I know enough to finish this. No, this is not the end. Soon you'll realize that this is only the beginning. You caught a glimpse of your destiny. Six months earlier. Ugh, 9.15. All right, I'm up, I'm up, I'm... Late. I'm, v I'm very, very late. You leap out of bed and throw... Oh, open your closet doors. This could be the biggest day of my career. I need to look great. Hmm. Eh. That'll do, I guess. Dress for work, you leave your apartment and sprint to the train station. Come on, don't leave without me. Just as you reach the platform, the train doors close shut. No, no, wait! This is a typical origin story for the superhero. Being late to jobs and stuff. Yeah, this is nice. You watch helplessly as the train barrels away from the station, leaving you behind. Of all the days to be late to work, why did it have to be today? After waiting around for the next train, you finally arrive at Prescott Industries. That is a large building. The tall, the tall glass skyscraper gleams brightly in the morning sun. As you walk toward the building, you hear someone call your name. You turn around to see Poppy Patel. 
hurrying toward you with two iced lattes. Poppy, what are you doing here? Bring you an iced latte to kickstart your big day, of course. You're going to need it now that you're in charge of playing the biggest social event of the season. Speaking of which, you didn't happen to snag your favorite person in the whole world and invite, did you? You said last week that you would try to get me in the big gala at Prescott Industries tonight. So this latte comes with a few strings attached, huh? No, well, maybe a bit, but I will, but you will try to get me in, won't you? <clears throat> All the best and brightest and most fashionable people in the Northbridge will be there. When Prescott Industries unveils a new technology, that's major. Not just major, Salas Prescott said his new invention would change the world as we know it. No clue. I work for Grayson Prescott, not his father, remember? I'm dying to know what the invention is just like everyone else. Speaking of Grayson, the handsome, charming heir, you could ask him to invite me, couldn't you? I'm sure he wouldn't say no to his favorite executive assistant. If I, if I can get the inside scoop on the gala, I'll be shooing. I'll be a shoo-in for the promotion to Motive's senior fashion editor. I need this. <laughs> I know. I know, Poppy. This is a big opportunity for me, too. Then get in there, do the best job you can possibly can with the gallop preparations, and Grayson will be so impressed he won't say no to you. I promise I'll find a way to pay you back. It's you better. But friends don't owe each other. Many times, but I can't say I've gotten tired of it. Then I'll keep saying it. Just don't forget to ask him, okay? I promise I won't. Now I really should get to work. I'm late enough as it is. And so are you. Oh, don't be silly. Being fashionably late is all part of the job. We were sitting outside for that long. You push through the glass doors and into the lobby of Grayson Prescott. Confidently directs the gala preparations. Grayson! Reminds, remind you of anybody? No? Okay. Bring those tables through here. We'll want to give our guests the best possible view at tonight's unveiling. Grayson turns and notices you enter. Then he, there you are, just in the nick of time. Sorry I'm late. Somehow I managed to miss my train again. It's alright, here now. I am. So how are the gala preparations going, Mr. Prescott? He's my father. Call me Grayson. We did go to school together, after all. All right, Grayson. Actually, I was hoping I could ask you something. Just then, Majori, Mile, Ma Majori Miles, Director of Operations, marches over, her eyes narrowed behind her thick framed glasses. <laughs> About time you showed up, Anthony. Why is it always this one horrible boss in a hero's in a hero's work? There's like one horrible boss that hates it when the when the main character's late. Like give me a break, I just missed my train. It's only a quarter past That's exactly a quarter past the time you were supposed to be here. See? This is what I mean. In other words, late. As for you, Grayson, your father wants a word. 
It sounded urgent. Thanks for letting me know. Anthony, can you handle this on your own? Uh, I think so. Don't worry. I'll make sure he doesn't screw anything up too badly. I'm sure he won't. See you later. Good luck. As Grayson heads for the elevators, Majori turns to look at you, her expression impatient. Oh no. Tonight could be the most important night in this company's history. Do you understand what that means, Anthony? Does it mean that you need a new haircut? What? <laughs> it means that it's also the most important night of your otherwise rem unremarkable life. So, are you finally ready to do your job and help me? Is everything okay, or why don't you try asking nicely? Eh, sorry, but you can't be mean to your boss, sometimes. No, everything's not okay. The mayor's office had weeks of RSVP with any dietary restrictions. And they waited until this morning to let me know that the mayor is allergic to shellfish. Is that some type of, um... Seafood? I don't know. So we don't serve that. Tell that to the 30 pounds of Sivishi de Cameron we already paid for. What? French? That is a problem. But I'm sure I can figure something out. I wish I had much... I wish I had as much faith in you as, I, as you do. Uh, right, so where do we start? I need you to call around and find somebody not embarrassing to serve for an appetizer at the gala tonight. Do you think you can st stop swiping or pick ta talking or whatever you... I don't know that word. Do long enough to accomplish one task? Yes, I can do that. You pull, you pull your laptop from your bag and start searching for caterers. 15 minutes later, it took you 15 minutes? Oh, never mind. Well, let's order. Old Citra Caviar or Tacos? Hmm, rare, expensive. That could be acceptable. It better be. One serving costs more than a week, more than I make in a whole week. Since you managed to produce a halfway decent idea for the appetizer, what do you think we should do with all this Ugh! Oh no. I think we should... Donate it, serve it for lunch, or dump it. We could donate it. I'm sure the Northbridge Homeless Shelter would be glad to take it. Well, aren't you a little the little hero? But then again, donations are tax deductible. Congratulations on not screwing this up, Anthony. Keep it up and you might be considered semi competent someday. Can't wait. I'll continue handling things here. In the meantime, I need you to check on, um... In with Dax in engineering and Santiago in security. Report back to Grayson once you've confirmed that they're ready. Okay, got it. Then why are you still standing here? Chop, chop. Okay, boss lady. Jeez. A few minutes later, you step into the engineering lab to find it seemingly empty. Hello? Dax? Anybody here?
At the far end of the room, a curtain hides an enormous something from view. That must be the new technology Prescott Industries is unveiling at the gala tonight. As you step deeper into the lab, the floor beneath your feet begins to tremble gently. It's supposed to be a secret, but Dax probably wouldn't mind if I take a peek, I think. I should... Hmm... Should I take a peek or just wait for him? Hmm... All these choices, man. No pun intended. Um... Oh, okay. <sighs> ah, wait for him to show. This tech looks pretty sophisticated. Probably safer if I just hang back. You retreat to the entrance of the lab and the trembling sub... Sides. Just then, Rex slides out of the neath, neath a nearby computer console, pushing his goggles up to, onto his forehead. Just a few seconds. You didn't touch anything, did you? Of course not. Why? A few minutes ago, the system diagnostics went haywire. It was like the XD917 crystalline array somehow activated all its on its own. What? I, did I say that? I meant classified, re, red acted under NDA bleep. Right, a secret. Anyway, Majori asked me to check on preparations for the unveiling tonight. Will you be ready? Dax inspects the data visualizations streaming on a nearby console. Oh, weird. Things seem fine now. I've literally never seen that happen before. You're not carrying any raw Prometheum around, are you? Uh, not that I know of. Yeah, didn't think so. That is very, very strange. I'm going to run through the system diagnostics once more to be sure. But yeah, all seems green. All systems green. As much as I as much as I understand it anyway, only Silas knows what it's supposed to do when the power is turned on. Wait, seriously? Yep, I was uh, I'm as stoked as Stoked for the big reveal tonight, as you are. Okay. You start toward the door and then turn back. Actually, Dex, there's one more thing. So, I thought you might want to know there's a chance that Poppy is coming to the gala tonight. Oh, uh, really? Why would I want to know that? You tell me. I was definitely getting a vibe when the three of us went out for drinks last week. A vibe? What kind of vibe? From her or from me? I'm confused. Yeah, I can see that. I mean, she could never be interested in me like that. Could she? Only one way to find out. Although, I technically haven't asked Grayson if I can invite her yet. Well, just let me know, I guess, or don't, either way. A related topic, should I wear anything special? What do you think about cologne? Did I say it right? I mean, I don't own any cologne, but I've got access to lots of chemicals, so I could probably whip something up. What about the diagnostic? Yes, diagnostic, top priority. Exactly. See you later, Dax. You head to the chief of security's office where Santiago Lupo eyes a row 
of security monitors. One has been tuned to the local news. String of brazen daylight robberies that have plagued the Northbridge Jewelry District. Santiago smiles as you walk over. Morning, Anthony. You hear about all the all these armed robberies? Hmm. Straight to the professional opinion, huh? Something like that. The police don't have a clues behind all the diamond heist, but if you want my opinion, these guys had military training. We're talking explosives, highly coordinated strikes, the whole nine yards. You almost have to admire them. Why would I admire bank robbers again? They sound pretty dangerous. Unfortunately, they're hardly the worst in this or this city has to offer. But don't worry, I went over the security plans for tonight's gala with Silas Prescott. Personally, the party's gonna be great, but the security you'll be even better. You need to, you need an attack helicopter to punch your way through your way through our defense grid. Isn't that kind of Overkill. <laughs> no such thing in my book. Mayor Brady, District Attorney Katsaros. <clears throat> Excuse me. All the most important people in the city are going to be at Prescott Industries tonight. Nothing is going to happen on my watch. I feel safer already. After saying goodbye to Santiago, you take the elevator up to the second highest floor and step into Grayson Prescott's office. Everything's ready for tonight? Yep, everything's taken care of. Work hard, play hard. That's good news. But I believe there was one more thing to discuss. Six o'clock right now. There was. This morning you wanted to ask me a question. What was it? I I have a friend who wants to come to the gala tonight. She's one of my best friends and she's a junior fashion editor at Motif. Motif, really? If we could put her as on the guest list. write something nice about the gala. I suspect my father's announcement tonight will be will make for plenty of good publicity public publi Ugh I can't stop stuttering. Publicity. Alright. But there's no need to sell me on her attending. She's more than welcome to come. Really? Really, any friend of yours is a friend of mine. That's what they all say. <coughs> Now, am I now am I mistaken or is the junior editor you're referring to Polly I mean Poppy P Patel? Yeah, that's her. I remember you two were close in school. She's more than welcome, but I have to say, I was devastated to see her article declaring that joggers were officially off trend. Off trend? <laughs> well, I'm sure they'd still work if you. I'm kidding. <laughs> ah, gotcha. See you tonight. Definitely. That night back at your apartment. Ah, oh, boy. E. I'm so excited. This is the swankiest social event of the year, and I actually get to go. Ahem. <laughs> and all thanks to the boundless generosity of my best friend, who I would do anything for. You said you were going to pay me back. Better. <laughs> I've been thinking about the gala for weeks, and I know exactly what I'm 
going to wear. Sits into the other room and emerges a few seconds later wearing a sinkly dress. Ta-da! Ta-da! You don't have to tell me I look fabulous because I already know I do. Now the important question, what are you going to wear? Uh, I don't know. I was thinking I was just worth what I have on. Listen, tonight's going to be the be huge for you. If you want to move up in the world, you've got to look the part. Not to mention you've been single for far too long. Hmm. Uh, she, it's like she read my mind in real life. <laughs> like, literally read my mind. I'm still single to this day. Anyway, I'd say it's high time we change that. Do you think that there be anyone who's my type there? Well, you never know, right? But you should at least dress up for my sake. You know, your best friend who helped you through many hard times in college. I seem to remember that the other way around. But okay, what do you suggest? Glad you asked. Poppy digs through the clothes she brought over and pulls out a garment bag. I've been hanging on to this for a fashion shoot, but no one will notice if it goes missing for a wild night, for a night or two. Go ahead and try it on. You step out of the room, change and return a few minutes later. Well, what do you think? Stunning. Simply stunning. Promise me you'll wear that. Hmm. Of course, I'm gonna wear something nice to a gala. Okay, I promise. Yes, you're going to be the center of attention tonight, Anthony. Better make the most of it. I'll do my best. Ready to head out? Absolutely. <sighs> you and Poppy arrive at the gala to find Prescott Industries lobby awash in a sea of high-profile guests in gowns and tuxes. Un Uninformed waiters circulate with trays of appetizers and fluted glasses of sparkling champagne. Never thought I'd say this, but I'm feeling a little undressed. This party... This is, she, don't be silly. We fit right. Well, you do... Well, you do it. Well, you do at least. You grab a glass of champagne from a passing waiter and take a sip. Hey, guys. Speaking of getting dressed up, nice to finally see you out of a lap coat, Dax. It's weird, right? I feel weird. I think I'm gonna put a, gonna go put it back. <laughs> no, don't seriously. You look good, almost as good as our little fashion. Fashionista here. Yeah, well. Believe me, I know. You're okay, I guess. Don't say that to a woman when she dresses nicely. Okay, okay, sorry, you look great. <laughs> See what happens? But it's an open bar. Details, details. You and Drax trail behind Poppy on your way to the bar, hanging back just out of her earshot. So, are you nervous? Not at all. We've regurgled. This tested the device since this morning's anomaly, and everything looks. I mean, I meant Poppy, genius. Oh, right. Do you really think she might be interested in me? I'd say you're doing great so far. Of course. The three of you cross the lobby, passing by District Attorney Mako Katsaros and her son. Kenji, can't believe this. You wait until now to tell me you're dropping out of law school. Relax, Mom. I've got it all figured out. Can't we just focus on enjoying the party? 
Excuse me, ma'am, sir. She looks, she looks nice. Here are your drinks. She looks beautiful. Finally, bottoms up. This conversation isn't over, Kenji. Let me tip the waitress for these drinks and well. That's strange. I must have left my wallet at home. It's quite all right, ma'am. No tip necessary. Well, did I feel like she took it. I feel like she took the wallet. As you reach the bar, Poppy taps your arm and points. It is at the far end of the bar. Grayson stands in a close circle with several businessmen and his father, Silas Prescott. I gotta say, I'm glad you boys came to us with this opportunity. The Bayside neighborhood has been an unsightly blemish on our fair city for too long. It could use a little redevelopment. Dad, I'm not so sure about this deal. Redeveloping Bayside, which would mean pricing long-term residents out of their homes. Where are those families supposed to go? The rent in the city in this city is already at the an all-time high. Silas flashes an annoyed look at his son, but quickly covers it with a laugh. Gentlemen, you'll have to forgive my son. He doesn't quite have the killer instinct necessary to succeed in this business yet. Maybe I just don't think life has to be a, zero, a zero-sum game. This time, Silas fails to cover his annoyance. That's what losers tell themselves. You think I got to where I am today by being soft? I, I think I need some air. Excuse me, gentlemen. Grayson takes his drink and heads upstairs toward the balcony, his father disapproving stare following him across the gala. That was hard to watch, yeah. It looks like Grayson's in need of rescuing. Now's your chance to be the hero. Spending quality time will certain with certain characters will improve your friendship and strengthen your connection. If you play your cards right, you might take your relationship to the next level. Eh, it's definitely not my place. And also, I'm trying to save, save up on diamonds. Well then, whose place is it? You're his executive assistant. I'm sure he'll be okay. He deals with this sort of thing all the time. It's not my problem. You, Poppy, and Dax mill about the lobby for the next half hour, mingling with your Prescott co-workers. Suddenly, a hush falls over over the assembled guests at the music as the music fades out. Is this the big announcement? Shh! Yeah, shush! Shush, Poppy, shh! Everyone turns to watch as Silas Prescott descends to the central staircase holding the room's attention without so much as a word. Ladies and gentlemen, it's such an honor to see you all here tonight. Mayor Brady, District Attorney, Ugh. I hope you're all you hope you're all enjoying my champagne. A ripple of laughter passes through the crowd and Silas smile indulgently. But as many of you have probably guessed, I didn't organize this little shindig my um, just for the pleasure of your esteemed company. In fact, I have something incredible to show you. Something that will change the world as we know it. The crowd chuckles pleasantly. Silas's, Silas steps over to a large curtain on the far end of the room. Please forgive my flair for the dramatic. I know the suspense must be unbearable, but I assure you, a discovery of this magnitude deserves a quality grand reveal. The crowd goes quiet as Silas holds up an enormous pink crystal. 25 years ago, my my late wife and I discovered this crystal on an archaeological expedition. Hmm, nice. It's beautiful. 
Analysis revealed that this was no ordinary crystal. Its subatomic particles show a composition composition of that defies quantum mechanics as we know it. So the brilliant scientists at Prescott Industries have spent the last 25 years writing new rules. Dax, is this this Dax? This is the secret project you were working on. Just all the parts that required a handsome young science genius. This incredible discovery now powers a device we call the Prism Gate. Hmm, where have I heard Prism Gate before? I don't know, probably something else. Silas gestures and the curtain behind him raises, un revealing a strange device with two curved pylons attached to a control panel. Okay. The prison gate operates under its own power and provides access to a clean and exhaustible energy source. The crowd gasps. <gasps> <coughs> you heard that right. Infinite clean energy at an, an end to femate, to femine, to pollution, to inequality. Now, watch. So this places the crystal in a slot on the prism gate control panel, and the prism gate begins to resonate. A pink, un otherworldly glow fills the entire lobby. Ooh, so bright. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the future. <laughs> really? Just then, just as the crowd erupts in applause, an explosion thunders over from overhead. The overhead skylight bursts inward, showering the room with shards of glass. Security? Everyone stay calm. Yeah, when people are panicked by something like this, and someone says stay calm, they never, people never stay calm. Four masked men carrying fully automatic rifles rappel down into the lobby from the roof. <laughs> everybody, everybody on your knees, this is a robbery. Don't you say that at a bank? Nobody does anything stupid. Nobody does anything stupid. Nobody has to die. So pretty please. Do something stupid. Oh, oh crap. Oh my goodness. You got arm robbers coming from the ceiling and it, it's just, the, it, I don't know. He said, please do something stupid. I don't know. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed the video today. Make sure you guys give this video a thumbs up. Subscribe if you're new to my channel. Um, share this with your friends. Comment below what you think of the video. And if you want to get notified of the videos I put up, just hit the notification button next to the subscribe button. And I will see you guys in the next video. Tomorrow, we are going to complete two chapters of, of, of Hero. Okay? So, anyway, I'll see you guys next time.